Hey guys, how's it going? It's Valentine's Day today, so before we even begin, I want to wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day. Now, while I myself don't actually have a Valentine, I did get my Valentine's gift today. I finally got an answer to the question that I have been so stressed about for the last two weeks. And as you can probably tell, it was a good one. So, in today's news video, I'm bringing you, once again, more VR news. Some about the quest, some about some games, and some about a headset that doesn't seem to be coming into fruition. So, as usual, in case you guys like this one, make sure to slap that little red button down below, and let's get right into it. So while most of the news in today's video is going to be quite neutral, as you can probably tell by the title, something didn't go quite right. And if you guys know Oculus, you know they don't allow apps and games onto their store that they find are lower quality in order to not give VR a bad name and not kind of bring down the quality of VR games that are on their store so that when people first hop into the store and try out a game, their experience is good and they come back. Overall, it's a pretty good motto, even though some some games, I think, should be allowed into the store. But it seems like things don't always go Facebook's way. As Meta's Foo Fighters Quest livestream was plagued with connection issues. Foo Fighters made their VR debut inside Horizon venues last night, but the Meta Quest concert doesn't appear to have gone quite as planned. The band had pre-recorded a 40-minute video performance that ran inside the app and in browsers following the Super Bowl. If you were joining in venues, you would in theory get to hang out with friends as your meta avatar whilst watching the performance on an enormous screen. But based on our own experiences and many comments around the web, the experience didn't quite go as smoothly as planned for many people. So yes, I did actually notice this on Twitter yesterday, but it does seem like a lot of people had connection issues. And this goes the same way. If people hop into the quest for a live stream for an event and the event is well broken, you can't connect, it's plagued with connection issues, people might not necessarily want to come back. And if it's a paid event even worse. As Kent Bai of Voices of VR wrote on Twitter, the venue's experience only opened at 8pm PST, the exact time the show was scheduled to begin. This caused a lot of confusion for people trying to figure out where to head in in the build-up of the concert. And the band's recording started five minutes after doors opened. When the event did launch, it seemed to be popular. Bai's image showed over 10 thousand people looking to watch the show. So as you can see, it was quite a popular event. A lot of people did want to join. However, as we can see, streaming doesn't always go our way, especially when you're not ready for that amount of people to join. Now, that's not to say that there shouldn't have been servers for it. Facebook is quite a server-rich company, and I can't imagine them not having enough server power. So what went wrong? I'm not entirely certain. But I'm sure this is partially one of the reasons why Facebook is so against cloud gaming right now. It's why they stopped any cloud gaming services on their official store and we have to sideload them through SideQuest. It's why you can't get Plutosphere from the official Oculus store. It's a big problem right now because as more and more issues like this show up, the further we're getting from where we're supposed to be instead of closer. And once again, this could leave a bad taste in the mouth of people that really wanted to see the concert and possibly couldn't. But let me know what you think down below. I would love to hear your opinions. On a good note, the Oculus Quest has now gotten a very nice hand interactions update. As you guys know, we talked about this in a previous video, hand interactions now have an SDK available to developers. However, Glitchy's Virtual Grasp software development kit is now available through the company's early access program, offering auto-generated and dynamic hand interactions and grasp positions for VR developers. This is really cool for a lot of reasons. If we don't have good hand interaction in VR with hand tracking, it's not going to look natural, it's not going to look good, and we're overall just not going to have a good time. It'll take you out of the immersion. However, with these SDKs coming out and with interaction kits coming out, I think we're getting so much closer to really nice hand tracking. Upload VR first reported on Glitch's technology back in early 2020, when the company released footage of their Virtual Grasp SDK in action, which automates the programming of hand interactions in VR and allows for easy grasping and interaction with any 3D mesh object. This is really cool, especially since it's automated, giving developers more time to work on other parts of the game, making their lives easier. And as I know, from trying and miserably failing, game development isn't exactly simple. Two years on, the SDK is now available through Glitchy's Early Access Program, which you can find and apply for right here on this link in Upload VR's article. The SDK supports all major VR platforms, provided as a plugin that can be integrated into existing applications with support for Unity and Unreal, for both controller and hand tracking interactions. So not only are you able to use this with hand tracking, you're also able to use it with virtual hands that you might have through controllers, which again is really 
really cool as not everybody likes using hand tracking and those hands do need to interact well with the object no matter what you're using. So that's really cool. I cannot wait to see more of this in action as I really like my virtual hands to, well, kind of do what they're supposed to. Contractors, a pretty big game, a game a lot of people seem to love and play around with, gets custom maps across PC and Quest. Can I just say what a big deal this is? Custom maps and just overall modding on the Quest is huge. People love the quest because it doesn't require a PC, and when a game like Blade and Sorcery allowed mods on quest, it was massive, it was huge, it gave the community something amazing, and it was allowed. Unlike Beat Saber, where it's silently not allowed but nobody seems to care, Blade and Sorcery allowed it, and they made it loud because they wanted to know that yes you can mod our game we know that mods make the game so much better for people and now we have exciting news for you operators out there caveman studios latest updates for contractors add some requested patches and a major new feature the biggest addition to the contractors update v091 is custom maps contractors now allows user generated content across pc and quest you can check out their official mod kit guide to get started building maps Maps to share with other operators. The mod kit will allow you to modify and upload custom maps, but currently is not possible to mod loadouts and game modes, though this should be supported in an upcoming update. If you would like to see a list of the available mods, you can find them on the official contractor's website. This is really cool and really epic. I love when companies and game studios give access to the user. Let the user make what they want to make. It's just so good. It's like Minecraft mods all over again, but this time it's in contract. I, I get really excited about Minecraft mods. I used to love those things. It just, it gives the user control and lets them make what they want to make, what they want to see. And I love that. Let me know what you think down below. Now as for some games, here's some new Moss Book 2 screenshots. A lot of you love Moss. Moss had really high praise as a storytelling game. It's beautiful. And we're getting Moss Book 2. We've just been treated to a handful of new screenshots from Polyarch's Moss Book 2. The images debuted over on the PlayStation blog today and showed off three new environments players will be able to explore with Quill in the upcoming sequel. As usual, these things look absolutely beautiful. I mean, the art style in the original Moss was just so beautiful. And if you guys played it, you know what I'm talking about. If you guys want to read the full article, I'm going to leave a link to it down below, but I'm just treating you to the screenshots. And finally, we have something that I'm very excited for, AR Pass-Through in OpenBrush. OpenBrush has shared footage of Quest AR Pass-Through that is coming soon. You guys know we use the AR Pass-Through glitch to use multi-brush to draw in my room, and it was such a great experience. It was like I could bring my drawings or just like my doodles, I wouldn't call them drawings, they're more like doodles, into the real world right there in my room. I didn't care if it was black and white, it looked so cool. And I laughed in my last video that, hey, they should bring that back. But OpenBrush was already on the case. OpenBrush has sharing footage of their quest pass-through mode on their Twitter account. So if you guys are excited for that one, it's seemingly coming soon. And I'm very excited for it. I can't wait to be doodling around my room once again with quest pass-through. As I love quest pass-through, it's a great feature that is pretty much locked up to the quest right now with hand tracking, with things like that. And the fact that it's fully standalone makes that pass-through almost like AR. If only it wasn't black and white and didn't look like it was raining constantly. And we have some doubt as for the HoloLens 3. I know a lot of you love the HoloLens. You love flexing on me that you're using it for work and that you have one at home. Thanks. However, we now have a report that casts doubts on the HoloLens 3 and Microsoft says AR headset is doing great. Microsoft's enterprise-focused HoloLens 3 may be dead in the water, as a recent report maintains that the internal divisions have hobbled the company's efforts to release its next AR headset as planned. In the days following the report's release, HoloLens co-creator Alex Kipman responded, saying, don't believe what you read on the internet. Interesting. A Business Insider report from earlier this month maintains that the plans to release the HoloLens 3 are shifting behind the scenes. This comes alongside an alleged partnership with Samsung that would see the development of a wholly new consumer AR device that is rumored to tether to a Samsung smartphone. This has allegedly caused divisions within the company surrounding whether HoloLens should serve consumers or continue porting enterprise companies. Yeah. So that's that for you right there. In case you're interested in the full article, you can read it down below. I know the time is already getting long and I don't want to stretch out this video, but you know, as said, don't believe everything you hear on the internet. All we can do is wait for an official news release or something official from Microsoft on that. I would love for a HoloLens 3 to come out. I love the HoloLens as a device and I got to try it and it was it was incredible. Maybe the FOV was a little bit tiny, but it was, it was incredible. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you'll have a fantastic day or night once again. 
happy Valentine's to you guys. If you guys like this one, please leave a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too, but please tell me why down in the comment section below. Thank you so much to the Patreon supporting this channel. You guys helped me out a ton, paying my little subscriptions here and there, paying my bills, stuff like that, making these videos better. So thank you so much for that. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape or form, we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300% and merch that does not put a huge out on your body. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out our Discord down below, check out our Reddit where I want to see you posting your spicy memes. And as usual, in case you guys want to be notified about future content coming up, on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.